just so you know. All right, again, tomorrow, tomorrow, we will go and we will um, take a test, like I said, and then we're, we're going to go through, we're going to actually just build a page or so as a class, okay? And we'll really, really take our time. Friday, what we're going to do is we'll take the test then on Chapter 3, all right? And we'll um, keep working on websites. Probably right now, next Monday, what we'll do is I'll give you, for lack of better words, we'll call it a pretest, and I'll say this is the kind of test you're going to have, and I'm going to get—I'll give you a couple hours. You get—you get four hours to work on it for a real test, but I'll give you a couple hours to work on it, and then we'll spend a couple hours going over it. Does that make sense? And then Tuesday you'll have your first test, a hands-on test on chapters one, two, and three. Open book, open notes. You can use the internet. All right. Now, you know, again, I tell you this stuff. I don't think what I'm about to say is funny. But, you know, it's closed neighbor. They have had situations, not in this program, but from what I've heard, where people have done more or less like phone a friend. So what they ask, they have changed it. Rankin has changed it. They do not want you to have your headphones on when you're taking tests. They don't want you listening to anything because they've been there have been cases where people have had other people you know, call them or do whatever, route it right into their earphones. Mm -hmm. If you got to go to the bathroom during the test, I understand that. You go to the bathroom. <clears throat> if you're gone more than 10 minutes, I start to get worried. See what I'm saying? So, all right. So as it says in Chapter 2, we learn the basic structure of how to make up a document. In Chapter 3, now we'll learn how to code the elements that you have in most documents. It says then in chapters four, five, and six are all on CSS. So we're gonna do one, two, and three, and then we'll have a test. Then we'll do four next week. The following week we'll do five and six. Guess what? Then we'll have a test. Does that all make sense? And remember there this when I say this, that that uh, Pre-test, that'll be Tuesday. We don't meet next Monday, remember, because it is uh, Labor Day. Okay? So you can see what's in here. Just so you know, we'll talk quite a bit about this head section. We've said a lot of this stuff already. We'll talk about the, some of these text elements we've looked at already. Some of this content we've looked at already. But what I want you to see is this. There is a whole chapter later in the book on links, lists, and images. Did you all hear me? So they're going to introduce it now. If there's a few things in here that don't totally make sense, they should, all right, they should make sense by the time we go through and do some examples. If they don't for some reason, you got to tell me. So what I'm saying is when we come through here and we take a test, like a pretest or whatever, on Tuesday of next week, I'll go over it line by line. But if there's something you don't get, you have to ask. Because a similar type of thing will be on the real test you'll take the next day. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. All right. So you've already seen the head section. You know what that title tag is. All right. That means that up here, now notice it says here San Joaquin Valley Town Hall, with a, uh, this is called a pipe sign speakers and luncheons but all it says up here is san joaquin town all right yeah and a little bit of whatever comes next you only get a certain amount and the more tabs you have on a screen the smaller each tab is does that make sense but it is all there so in other words if you look up on the screen here if i take my mouse it won't work here but if this was a real website and i put my mouse right there on the tab i'd see all of this does that make sense to everybody? All right. Now, notice this link tag is different than what we had before. Does everybody see this link tag? This link tag allows you to add what's called a favicon. You say, I don't know what that means. Look on the screen. There's the favicon. See that? All right. So, for instance, if I was going to make a website for a gym, I might have a favicon in the upper corner that had maybe a pair of dumbbells on it or something like that. 
Does that make sense? Usually, this is a very small little picture. There's favicon generators. You can take a picture and have it generate a favicon for you. All right? Question? Yeah. See, I mean, there are there are a lot of them that are out there, but there are favicon generators that that uh, you know. If I I'm not going to do it, but if I said that free favicon generator, you put that into your address bar, you're going to find them. Right. And I'd suggest when you start doing stuff like that, try a couple of them. You might look at that, oh, that's not too bad. You might try another one and it might be a lot better or might be a lot worse. All right? Okay. So as it says, always code a title tag. Do you remember yesterday when I went and I, um, I validated the document and I had nothing in the title tag and it gave me an error? So the title tag has to have something in it. As it said, it should accurately describe the page's content. All right? Include a couple key words that really seem to make a lot of sense. San Joaquin Valley Town Hall, that's pretty good. All right? I mean, putting something in there, and I'm not saying you do that, but like, here's me. That wouldn't be very good. All right? All right. As it says, the title should be interesting enough to entice the reader to click on it. Okay. The title is what's going to appear in the search engine, just so you know. So when you Google it, that's what you're going to see, is there should be something in there, if, if this was on the Internet, for San Joaquin, Valley Town Hall, speakers and lunches. All right. Limit the length to about 65 characters. And what they're saying is most of them... If you have more than 65 characters, they'll just put like a greater than sign there, meaning there's more. All right. So again, a favicon, as it says, there is a custom icon. It typically appears on the left-hand upper corner. Don't have to have it there, but that, since that's where most people put it by default, it's probably where you should put it to. All right. And Maya, you'd asked about this. To create an ICO file, you can use an icon editor. All right. You may also be able to find them on the internet, etc. So there are a bunch of free icons, or uh, favicons out there already, if you do want to use those. All right. Let's just. Oh. All right. So we're in the head section. Look at everything that's up there that's green. We've already talked about the title. We've already talked about the char set. That stuff's not new. The new stuff is meta name equal description and meta name equal keywords. Everybody see that? Let me just tell you that that used to be real important for SEO, remember? Search engine optimization. But guess what? Google doesn't look at that anymore. And since Google's got 90% of the market, a lot of people don't put that in anymore. Bing still uses it. Yahoo still uses it. So the recommendation is that you put that in. So notice it says meta. Meta means data about data. So this is a description of what the site's about. A yearly lecture series with speakers that present new information on a wide range of subjects. All right. Then here, these are keywords. So imagine I was doing a website for a hotel. Okay. My, my keywords might be Hotel, let's say that it was in St. Louis. St. Louis, you know, traveling, travel adventure, and stuff like that. That's typically what you put in. That goes in the head section. So if you need a better explanation of that stuff, there's a little table right there. I could sit and read this to you, but you can read it yourselves. All right? Do I need to show you H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, and H6? We already looked at H1, H2, H3, and H6, right? So you know those. Notice, double the regular font size, one and a half times the font size, 1.17 the, the size, 100% of the size, etc. See that? That's by default. How do you change that? With CSS. I can come in with CSS and say, I want all H1 tags to be a thousand times the regular font size, and it'll do it. Might be very hard to read on a screen, but it'll do it. 
Here are some guidelines that they give you on the bottom of the page here. I'm on page 91 for SEO. All right. It says, always use heading tags the right way. Again, did you hear this before from me? A single H1 tag on each page. All right. Don't use heading levels. No, you know, don't, don't like have H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, and H6, and use them like A, B, C, D, E, F. All right. But you can go in and use CSS to size them, make them any size you want. All right. These are known as block elements. I want to quickly show you what a block element is. All right. So I'm going to come in here and where was that one we had before? This one. I'm going to come in here and you saw this already, but this is our H1. I think you'd all agree with that, right? Okay. Instead of the color being purple, I'm going to make the background color purple. All right? So we come back to here. We come back to here. Let's run this. Why it's not allowing me to run that? I, geez. All right. Well, I, I've got it the wrong size. But what I want to show you is literally this element, even though you can't see it on here, takes up 100% of the width that we're providing for it here. So it's literally taking up 560 pixels in this case. So why didn't that work? H1, size margin padding, background color purple, and we saved it. I have no idea why that didn't work. But it should have. Oh, I don't know what's going on with it. All right. Hopefully, any problems like this that I'm having will be changed once I do go to the new machine. All right. See this tag right here? Everybody see this? It says pre. You all see that? Remember when I did this yesterday? In other words, when I came in here and did this. So let's put in, I'm going to put in another paragraph right here. Oops. All right. So again, you saw this yesterday. Put in another BR tag there. All right. There it is. Okay. No, no big thing. But you also saw yesterday when I did this. Remember that? And I hit enter. Is this going to look any different now when I refresh? What if I want it to look like that? I'm not, I don't want to use BR tags. I don't want to use those. I just want it to look like this. I can take this and surround it by what are called pre-tags, which means I'm pre-formatting it. See that? So it'll make it look exactly the way that it looks as I'm typing it in, if I want to do that. Now, you might look at this and say, why the heck would you do that? That's dumb. All right, I get it. Oh, the reason that this didn't change... It's because it's not an H1 tag anymore. So if I go back to here, and remember I made it an H6. If I make this an H1, it should now have a purple background. There it is. All right, let's keep going. Block quotes, they're used for quotations. Have you ever seen, you know, anything online where somebody has a quotation it might be centered or it might be right justified or left justified you can use a block quote to do that and address as it says it's used for address information so notice if you look on the screen here here's there's a block quote see how it's centered and there's address stuff it typically will take it and italicize it 
what you're going to tell us. All right. Now, here's a lot of things. Now, I want to show you something. I don't expect you to remember this, but I expect you to understand it. Is that fair? Yeah. All right. So, you already saw some of this that I'm about to show you. If I come through here, I'm going to go and grab everything that's in this file that I've got. I'm going to remove all of it. I'm not going to save, but I'm going to remove all of it. I want to show you a few of these tags that are here and how they're used. So what do we have? Sub, sup, and BR. The BR you already know. All right. So um, See what's in there? Sub tags. All right, I'm going to come back in here. This is going to look a lot different now. Can you tell the words hello there are lower? Can you see that? Yeah. All right, that's subscripted text. If I change it from sub to soup, it becomes superscripted text. So you'll see how it changes. Okay, again. That's probably pretty obvious to all of you as far as what's going on there. Those tags are referred to as inline tags. This tag I showed you here, when I made the background purple, the whole line was purple, as wide as the screen was. This, if I come through here just to show you, I'm going to put back up what I had before. I said, <clears throat> sup. Hello there. How are you? All right. And if I come through here and I say that every SUP tag, like the one I just put in, all these SUP tags, all right, I want all of them, for example, to have uh, a background of pink. Would you agree the background's pink? Mm -hmm. Is the whole line pink? No. That's called an inline element, so it's part of what's on a page. Is that how you do a link too for an inline element? Well, you're gonna you're gonna see that in just a second, because there's different ways that you can do it. Alright? So some of the other ones that are in here, just to show you as an example. I'm going to show you the wrong way of doing something. This is a B tag. B for bold. Okay. Can you tell hello there is bolded? Can you all see that? Mm -hmm. I can make the text bigger if you want to. All right. So I'm going to take it now and I'm going to change it from B to I. Want to guess what that'll do? That's correct. Can you see the difference? Yeah. Now, the recommendation today, never use a B tag, never use an I tag. Instead of B, and it's more typing, sorry, but instead of B, you type in the word strong. Oops, not string. Strong. Now, remember you saw before how it was bolded. See how it's bold again? So it's like B is so much less, it's like five or six letters less. Why type in strong? Strong is set up to work also with screen readers, with people who, are, who have physical limitations. The B tag is not set up for that. There, you have no guarantee that the B tag will work correctly on a browser for the blind. All right, and I tags are also gone. You don't use I, you use M, E M, which is short for emphasis. It's going to look the same to you and I as what we had before. It still looks italicized, 
but again to a screen reader. So I will expect, if I ask you to bold or to italicize something, that you will use a strong or an M tag. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. All right. I mean, there's a lot of them that are in here. You can run through them yourselves. It's not that big a thing. Oh, and I want to show you this. You, you, all, you all know what this is because we've talked about it before. If I come through here and say, how are you, and I put in a BR tag. Really? All right. You all know because you've all seen this. New line, right? Well, what if I, instead of putting in a BR tag here, I put in what's called an HR tag. HR means horizontal rule. Let's see how, how it looks different. See the difference? That's the horizontal rule. You can use CSS to make it a different color, to make it a different width, so it doesn't go as long, whatever you want to do with it. So there's a lot of different things that you can do with some of this stuff. So they give you examples of almost all of them here, and then they show you down here what they'll look like. What I want you to get is this line right here. An inline element means the stuff stays on the same line. It doesn't necessarily take up the width of the entire line like a block element does. All right. Block elements typically automatically have a blank line before them and a blank line after them. Inline elements do not. All right. Look on the screen if you would, please. See this stuff? Okay. I had a guy a long time ago, I, and, and I'm so far removed from this. Back in the days when you like would get a division problem in math, all right. Let's say it was your grade school. Did they write it like this? X equals seven divided by four. Did they write it like that, or did they write it like that? First one. First one. Yeah. Uh, it depends. Okay. The point is, I had a guy once ask me if he could use that symbol. And of course, me being a smart aleck, I said, sure, you can find it on your keyboard. It wasn't there, but if you go through the Unicode or ASCII character set, that's in there. So he started using it on all of his documents. Wow. You've got to add it like this. For example, if you want to add an ampersand, you can say at amp. If you want a copyright symbol, at copy. Is it at or and? It's an, it's an at it's an ampersand. Typically, you read it amp, amp copy, okay, etc. So what is that? What is that? Looks like an and sign. Which one? This? Uh, no, the one, the little thing next this? to the amp. Yeah. This, this one right here. This is the same as that one. But then, why is it different on the ones that are it? Because no, these are all. They all start with an ampersand. Like this looks like an and sign. This looks like an and sign. All this is like and sign. Like that's the and, LP, DP, yes. copy, right? And yes. it comes out those. Yes. Okay. When you start it with it with that ampersand sign there, uh -huh. that means it's called a character entity. So it means that if you want, in, in a footer, a lot of times you want to say copyright. Yeah. All right. You could say copyright, but you, you won't find that symbol on a keyboard. But if you say ampersand copy, at, uh, and you must put the semicolon at the end, it'll do that for you. That's how those are used. They're just basically there for special characters. You can do them this way too. Nobody I've ever seen uses those. All right. But the, I mean, there's there's other ways. You can use numbers. So there's different ways that this can be done. So, so to show you this, remember that site that I showed you yesterday? w3schools.com All right. Now I'll have to search for it, so I'll just come in here and just do my own Google search for HTML character entities. And one of the first ones that will come up is w3schools. The reason I'm showing you that, please look on the screen. See this? Come on, show me. Come on. See that? There's a, there are more 
in there than what are shown in the book. All right. So that's how you can do like a price tag before. Yes. So, okay. You can. You you can come in here. There's things in here for for different types of currency, etc. So no, this isn't what you asked Maya. But when you look in here, you could put if you wanted an ampersand, you could put this, or you could put this. This 38 right there, this pound 38, that 38, that is the ASCII character for an ampersand. The 62 is an, the ASCII character for a greater than sign. Yes. Why is it then? Why 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 if a ampersand on a keyboard? Do we need a? Um, it's a good question. Keyboard. Why would you need an ampersand? No, but to tell you to tell you that the short the short answer you don't need to use that one anymore. It used to be that when you put an ampersand on an HTML document, it meant that that was the beginning of a tag. Oh, All right. Okay. It also looked here just to show you this because I, I think this will answer your question. I'm going to get rid of this and I'm going to say hello, how, and I'm going to put this in here. R you. How are you and Joe? All right. Now, I'm going to save that. I'm going to run it again. See how it worked? Yeah. But what didn't work? That you I put in those things, didn't I? Yeah. It didn't work because it thought there was a tag called R. Yeah. So what I do here is I say, Ampersand LT for a less than sign with a semicolon. Ampers, whoops, ampersand G, GT with a semicolon. And you'll notice that once I do that and bring it up, now it works just fine. Again, they've got a complete list right here if you want to go and click that link. Probably even bigger than the one that's in W3 schools. All right. Okay, these are four things right here. If you look on the screen, you're going to have to start understanding, just so you know. ID, class, title, and lang. You already know what lang is. We already, we, right? We, true, we already went over this. We don't have to say any more about that one. You, you already know what that one is. Title, no, there's two ways you can use title. Oh. One way is the way that you've seen it, uh, your head section. The other way is, notice here, it says this title, enter email here. You know what a tool tip is? When you take your mouse and you put it over something, a little bubble. Yeah. You can use titles like that. That's cool. All right. So let's talk about these two, IDs and classes. If you've got something special on a page that will only appear once, you give it what's called an ID. All right? If you've got something that you might want to use all over the place, you give it a class. I'm going to show you an example. This is what chapters 4, 5, and 6 are all about. So if it doesn't totally make sense, don't let it worry you. I'm going to come back to our document here, and I'm going to put in three... We'll put in... Four paragraphs. Now is the time for all good people to come to the aid of their party. All right, and I'm going to just copy this. All right, so I've got that in there four times. All right, so what I did was I came in here and I added four paragraphs. You can all see them. There's nothing special at all about these paragraphs, so they come like this. Should make sense. Okay. Now, if I decide I want all of the paragraphs, you already know this, but I'm going to show it again anyway. If I want all of the paragraphs in here, I'm going to get rid of all of this CSS that's in there. I'm going to say for all my paragraphs, I want every one of them to have uh, a color 
of red. All right, so you know already, that means the text color on all those will be red, right? All right. Uh, let me grab this. There, I lost all my CSS, but I'm going to just comment it out instead of removing it. All right. So now all that's going to be in here for my CSS is this line. Somebody tell me, what does this mean again? What should happen now? Mike, can somebody tell me this? What does these, these, these lines of CSS, what does it mean? The paragraph is going to be right. All right. So which, which paragraphs? By default. All of them. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. What if I only want the first paragraph that's in there to be read? Not all of them, just the first one. Okay. Then I could take that first paragraph and I can give it an ID. So I'm going to say here, ID equals first. Not a great name, but it's just the one I'm going to use. All right. Now I come in here and I say for my paragraphs right there, all right, I say they're all red, but I say if it's got an ID, which is a pound sign, a first, then I want the color to be black. Now, since I only have one in here with an ID of first, just that first one should be black. Does that make sense? Let's see if indeed that's what happens. Okay. So do you understand when you apply an ID, it should apply to only one thing on the web page? All right. Now, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to add something else. We haven't talked about this yet. Don't let it bother you. I'm going to come in here and create what's called an unordered list. And I'm going to put three things in it. I really should be using uh, Visual Studio Code, but I, I promise you I will when I get to the new machine. All right, so first thing, second thing, second thing, third thing. What if I decide I want these two paragraphs and this unordered list. So I want all of this to be pink, but just that. Well, I can't say paragraphs because they'd all change. Maybe all right. I, I, if I say UL, it'll only change this thing. But if I come in here and say class equal pink, you nor normally you wouldn't make it the, the same name as the color you're using, but I'm just going to do it just to show it to you. Right. So if I do that, and then I come in here, and I say, if you have a class that's called pink, the color should be pink. So you see what's pink, right? If you only want one special thing on a web page, you designate that with an ID. If you want to be able to use multiple things, even different kinds of things, you use a class. Does that make sense? All right. Because you're, you're not going to believe how important classes and IDs are going to be as we get going. All right. You're going to use those as much as anything else you do in here. All right. Now, I gave you the, the, the lowdown about HTML5, etc how it's the latest and the greatest. It's also what's called semantic. If something is semantic, what that means is you should be able to look at it and understand what it means. Okay? So look here. These are the major HTML5 tags right there. There's about a half dozen, I guess seven of them. Header, main, section, article, nav, aside, and footer. You can use them in a lot of different ways. But what I'm telling you about these is when we start creating web pages, 
you will be expected to use these types of tags and use them in the right way. Does that make sense? All right. So there's a little explanation here. I'm not going to run through it. Headers at the top, footers at the bottom, typically, etc. But they give you an example where they create a header, they create a main, they create a footer. There is the header, there is the main, there is the footer. Why do you do that? Because it works well with search engines and it works well, again, with browsers for people who are physically or mentally or some other way challenged. That's why you do it. There's a few other ones. There's one called time, one called figure, one called fake caption. All right. And you can do that if you want to have stuff print out in a, in a regular different looking format. But again, the bottom line is these HTML5 elements are semantic. They are recognized by search engines. They are looked at favorably. So when you create a new website, they are what you should be using. I can't put it any clearer or plainer than that. You know, I, I, always, I always tell this story. I, I think I told you, I've got three kids. My middle daughter was always the most inquisitive out of all three of my kids. One day, you could tell she wanted to touch the stove. It was hot, okay? And I'd said, no, no, Mackenzie, you can't do that. She gave me a funny look, but she went away. She tried it again later. No, no, Mackenzie, you can't do that. She went up later, and before I could say anything, she touched it. All right? She learned her lesson, right, because she burned her fingers. Not bad, but she burned her fingers. All right? Well, the reason I'm telling you that is I don't want you to be burned when you go out there and start creating stuff. I want you to create it in the right way. One of the reasons that there are, there, yeah, and yes, there are jobs out there for web people is many people who are out there writing web pages, websites, have been at companies for years, have never been properly trained. And technically aren't doing things the right way. You know, it's the old joke about trying to put a round peg in a square hole. They've managed to do that. And sometimes their sites even look really good. But they're hard for other people to work with. So what we're trying to teach you here are the right ways of doing things. Right. All right. Div and span. Div means division. Span is part of a page. You're like, well, what the heck does that mean? Okay. Well, I'm going to come in here. Let's see. Um, I want to give you a better example than these because they're not good. Yeah, I like. Okay. So I'm going to come back here <clears throat> to what we were writing. And again, I'm going to get rid of these paragraphs and this thing that I put in here. So it's basically, it's empty again almost. All right. Have you ever seen a kid's book that starts with once upon a time and the O in once is real big? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. We're going to do that right now. that make sense when you do a span you're typically affecting you have it work on part of what's on a line of code all right maybe you've seen this where you want to take a certain word and and maybe just capitalize a certain word all right so just so you see this what if I decided I, I'm not gonna I'm gonna get rid of this this span I'm just gonna for right now I'm just gonna control X get rid of it all right so now I've got in here again Once upon a time. 
All right, everything looks fine. If I decide I want the word time to be capitalized, I can go back and capitalize it, right? But I can also do something like this. I can say style equals, what is it? I think it's, it's I don't know if it's transform or text transform. All right. Again, is it pretty obvious what I just did? We took the word time and capitalized it. How? There's different ways of doing it, but I didn't want to change what was there. I added a span tag to it. All right? When we get into chapters four, five, and six, we're going to be dealing with what are called divs. So I want to show you a way that you can use divs. All right? There's nothing magical about a div, just so you know. Nothing magical, all right? But if I come through here and I say, well, you know what? If I create a div, I want that div to be, I don't know, uh, with 250 pixels, height 250 pixels, and I want uh, the background. to be blue. All right, everybody sees that. Would you agree looking at it? There's nothing in here. Would you agree with that? There's nothing in there. But notice what happens when I do this. Nothing. So what did I do wrong? There's no other divs. Width, height, Shouldn't be color, but it could be, I guess. Don't make me a liar. Come on. 250. Well, what I'm trying to show you, not successfully, but what I want to show you is this. When we start working on this stuff, what you're going to see when we do this, and I'll have it fixed by then, is you're going to have a box here that's going to be blue. That's going to be 250 by 250. And it's like, who cares? Again, remember what, what um, Shannon had on the screen the other day where it went, looked pulsating? We're not going to do that but we're going to use animation to make stuff move around on the screen. Fade in, fade out, slide up, slide down, etc. You use divs for most of that stuff. All right. A div is a logical section of a document, period. That's the easiest way to explain it to you. All right. If you look up on the screen, please, and you look at, at both these that are in blue, those are called absolute URLs. An absolute URL starts with one of three things. HTTP colon slash slash. HTTPS colon slash slash. Or FTP colon slash slash. But it's got a full path to where you're going. Okay? If I'm already at a site and I do this, this means a root relative or a document relative means I'm already on the site and I can move around to different pages on the site. Does that make sense? You're, and you're going to see these again. All right. All right. Now, the question my asked before, uh, this is sort of going to start getting into it right now because we're going to talk about anchor tags. All right. So when you look, you already know this, but you're going to see it again. That is, I'm going to say this. Let's say here we said, once upon a time, there was a bear. Just popped into my head, but it's a bear. All right, so now I'm going to go out here, 
and I'm going to quickly go to Google and under Google I'm going to type in bear all right and bear Wikipedia good that's fine I want to be able to click the word bear and I want it to go to that Wikipedia site that makes sense so I'm going to say a href equals Put this on another line so it's easier for you to see. All right. We'll come back and look at it in a second. Let's make sure it works. Once upon a time, there was a bear. I click that. Where do I go? It's a Wikipedia site for bear. Okay. So when you look, what did we do here? The tag is here. That's the beginning of the tag. That's the end of the tag. The tag is called an anchor tag. All right. And it says when we click it, we want to go to the hypertext reference, which is https colon slash slash en dot wikipedia dot org dot wiki dot bear. So that's where we want to go. The word is automatically underlined and it's made blue. Not only that, if you didn't already notice, when you go and click on it, it'll typically turn a different color. We're going to learn how to make all of it. So if you put your mouse on it, it'll turn one color. If you click it, it'll turn another color, etc. We'll have a whole chapter on that a little bit later. All right. I already showed you this unordered list. Remember this? All right, so I already showed you. Let's grab this one that they have here. I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to paste it in. Get rid of this. Since it's unordered, there's no order to it. All right. In other words, these aren't in any specific kind of order. So I go and run this. Is that pretty obvious what just happened? If I go in and I change the UL to an OL, meaning it's now an ordered list, watch how it changes. Does that make sense? There's now some order to it. All right. So if I was... Let's say I was doing a recipe. Okay, so I come in here and I want a recipe for chocolate chip cookies. There we go. When you look at this, do you agree? I'm asking you this. Do you agree? The order that I list the ingredients doesn't matter. Would you agree with that? I'm No, no, no. I'm not talking about how you put them in a bowl. Oh, yeah. I'm just saying if I'm taking them all out of my... Cupboard yeah, yeah. doesn't matter. No. On the other hand, when I actually go in and start following the recipe, and I do all that stuff, and I follow those steps, then the order is going to matter. Would you agree with that? Yeah. So when I list the ingredients, I would I could easily use an unordered list or a UL. When I list the steps to cook them, I'd want an OL because the order would matter. If the order wouldn't matter, I could just throw them in there and any, any, you know, think about it when you get up in the morning. You get up in the morning, most people at least, you get up, you go, you go into the bathroom, you do whatever you have to do in there. You get done and you eat breakfast. But what if you ate breakfast first, you know, except, you know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? So order matters in an ordered list. Order doesn't matter in an unordered list, period. That's the easiest way to explain it. Images we've started talking about. I already told you what the source tag was. I told you what the alt tag was. I told you what the height was. I told you what the width was. Okay? And they're all explained right there. They give you a web page here that includes some of this stuff we've been talking about. It's all fine. Then they, they always do this in this book. They give you a picture. Then they show you the HTML, 
and they show you the CSS. All right. I didn't run off your um, test review. I'll run that off after class and give it your first thing tomorrow. All right. What I would like you to do, okay, is if you don't have a book, of course, this is going to be hard. But what I'd like you to do for the rest of the period is sit down, practice, create a simple blank document, and start seeing if you can create your own HTML document. I don't care what it is. All right, you can go back and look at this stuff if you've got the book. If you don't have the book, of course, you're not going to be able to do that. Use W3 schools. See if you can use some of the tags that we went over today. All right, because that's what we're going to be doing tomorrow. Tomorrow, what I'll do is I'll, I'll come up with three different things we can create a website on. I don't know what they'll be. I'll make them up before class tomorrow, and I'll let you vote. Now, if each one of you votes for one thing, then I'll pick. All right, but otherwise, we'll, we'll do it on whatever that one is.